Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you are doing extremely well. So today in this video, we are going to solve problem of the day on the Geeks for Geeks platform. So today's problem is by per type graph. So as usual, first of all, we'll be understanding the problem statement, then the logic part, and then we'll be coding it up, right? So before proceeding further, make sure to subscribe my channel if you haven't done so. And make sure to join our Telegram community as well so that you can stay updated with the job opportunities and all this stuff that we are putting on our channel. The Telegram channel link is there in the description. Other than this, you can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter as well. The handles has been mentioned in the description itself. Right. So before proceeding to the question part, so here you can see in this question they have talked about by per type graph. Right. So before understanding the logic and everything, we should know first that what is a by per type graph. Right. So if you want to learn about it, so just here you will find a very basic definition for the same. So what is a by per type graph? If the vertex set of a graph G, let's say we are having a graph G, if the vertex set of that graph can be split into two dis, uh, disjoint sets V1 and V2, right? So in such a way, in this way, that each edge in the graph joins a vertex in V1 to a vertex in V2, but there should be no edges in G that connects two vertices in V1 or two vertices in V2, then that graph is known as bipartite graph. For example, here if you will see uh, for this graph, we are having what? Two disjoints at V1 and V2, right? This one uh, which is having AB and the other one is CD, right? So here if you will see C, A and C are connected, right? So you can see that the vertex in V1 is connected to a vertex in V2. So A and C are connected, B and D are connected, A and D are connected, right? But here in this in this vertex a set that we are having, the disjoint sets that we are having, they are not connected. See, you can see C and D are not connected, A and B are not connected. So such type of graph is known as bipartite graph, right? So yeah, a very basic definition it is. I hope that you must have understood it. What is a bipartite graph? So basically that's what we have to do in this question. Uh, we have been given an adjacency list of a graph EDJ of V number of vertices having zero base index. We have to determine that the given graph is bipartite or not. For example, if you will see here, right? So for this one, we are getting what? We are getting output as one. So the, the given graph can be colored in two colors. So basically for solving this problem, we'll be using coloring approach. So here, see for example if you will see uh, first of all you can solve this problem using bfs or dfs in this uh, video i'll be explaining through bfs right so for example uh, you are starting with this node zero so what are the neighbors of zero right if you are doing bfs what are the neighbors of zero this only right one only one only right so zero if you are coloring with green right so one we can color with blue okay now for one if you will check so for one, what are the neighbors? Zero and two. So zero is already colored, right? Two won't be colored. For now, you can see that is colored, but let's assume that it is not yet colored. So we will color it with, uh, with some other color. Means uh, whatever is the color of the parent, the children should not be, or basically, I mean, whatever is the color of the node that we are considering, the neighbor should not have the same color. That's what the thing is. Right? So here you can see that in this given graph, uh, we can color that can be colored in two colors. So it is a bipartite graph here. If you will see here, if you will see, so see, this is not a possibility. So that's why it is not a bipartite graph. We are getting output as zero. The given graph cannot be colored in two colors such that colors of adjacent vertices. See for the color of the adjacent vertices should not be same, right? But here they are same. So that's why we are getting output as zero. So what we have to do is our task is to complete the bipartite function is bipartite, which takes V denoting number of vertices and EDJ denoting adjacency list of the graph and returns a Boolean value true if the graph is bipartite. Otherwise, it has to return false, right? So I hope the problem statement is clear. Now let's understand the logic part. Okay, so while discussing the question, what objective is that we have to achieve? Uh, we have to make sure that, for example, whatever node you are considering, right? So adjacent nodes should not be, the color of adjacent nodes should not be similar, right? And if we are able to satisfy this criteria, if we are able to meet this scenario, then we can say that our graph is bipartite. Now in terms of coloring, so what we can do is, what we'll be doing here is that we'll be taking an 
array let's call it as colors array right so that would be colors array itself and the size of the colors array depending on the number of nodes that we do have so for now we have four nodes one zero one two three right so initially uh, the values that will be there on these indexes that will be zero now for colors right so what we can do is we can choose two values one and minus one so if the node that you are considering if you are coloring this with one then the neighbors of that particular node we will color with minus one or we can say like we will put the value minus one right okay now uh, we are using bfs right we are using bfs here so we'll be using a q as well we'll be using a q as well right so let's get started then let's try to understand so let's say we started with this node zero okay so zero we started so we are going to put this into our queue zero we have put into our queue right now what we'll be doing is so for this zero we have uh, let's say we have made the value the color is one so at this index the color is one now what are the neighbors of zero one and three right for the neighbors what we're going to do is for the neighbors we are going to put the value minus one so at one we'll be having minus one and at three we'll be having minus one right and we'll be adding these values one as well as three in our queue zero will remove because we have we are done with the exploration of zero now comes now comes what one so for one what are the neighbors what are the neighbors let me mark the color even here so this is one uh this is minus one and this is minus one so for one the neighbors are zero and two so we'll make sure that whatever the neighbors are if they are not already visited means they are zero so the value of if this neighbor you will check right so this is what one this is not zero it means that is already visited so we, so we are not going to check this one then the next one is two so two the value is zero is still right so as if this node right that we are considering that is minus one so what would be the value at two that we're gonna put one right one so here we'll be having one here we'll be having one right so now what we can do is we can check if you are done with the exploration of all the nodes so here we are done with the exploration of all the nodes for one you have uh, for one you have explored so one what we're going to do is one we're going to remove from here and in q we were having three we'll be adding two as well but you can see here what you can see here what that we're done with the exploration of all the nodes right zero one for two if you will come so that is already been visited we are done with the exploration so we are not going to explore it again right so we'll stop right there now here if you will check so we have assigned the values so are they conflicting no right because you can see adjacent no nowhere are similar so if this is zero so they are minus one this is minus one this is minus one so this is one this is minus one so this is one this is one right so we can say that it is a bipartite bipartite graph right now there can be possibility that okay so this is a graph so there can be multiple components so accordingly we have to consider right so I hope you are you are clear with the explanation. You are clear with the logic part. So then let's move move to the coding part now. So here's the code for the approach that we just discussed, right? So here we are storing the size of the adjacency list, right? For like if it is having multiple components and uh, colors array, we are having of size v. That is the number of nodes that we do have. Then there's the for loop, and here uh, as I mentioned, like we are checking that if the node the ith node if that is already visited like if it is uh, equal equal to one or equal equal to minus one then simply we will be continuing uh, other than this we are taking a queue right to which we are adding a node the first node itself that is ith node and we are making the color as one now you can make it as minus one and then the neighbors you can make it as one it's it's up to you now here we are making sure like if q is not empty so whatever the value is there we are popping it out and uh, we are exploring the neighbors of that particular node, right? We are exploring the neighbors. So here we are making sure that uh, do explore a neighbor if it, if it is not already visited, right? It means that it is equal equal to zero. So if it is equal equal to zero, uh, what we are doing is we are assigning the value to that particular, like in colors of element is minus one into colors of current. Current is what? The node that we are currently exploring. 
right now how you will check that uh, like the given graph is not bipartite if if the adjacent nodes if the adjacent nodes are having same value right so that's what we are checking here that if colors of element that is the uh, neighbor you are checking and the node the current node that we are considering if the adjacent nodes are having the same value it means that it cannot be uh, like it cannot be a bipartite graph so a bipartite graph so we are returning false right and if this condition never met then at the last we are simply returning true so the code is provided in the description for the reference purpose so you can have a look on that so thank you so much for watching this video i hope you must have got it make sure to solve this problem by yourself the problem link is there in the description itself other than this don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you